G'day. Just going to give you a quick rundown on the GU here. I've had this one for about seven years now and I um, actually bought it off my cousin second hand. Had about 230,000 kilometres on it. It's got the 4.2 litre diesel, it was a naturally aspirated version and um, it's now got about 330,000 k's on it. I've since uh, put a turbo on it myself and, and done a heap of uh, different modifications to it, including the uh, DC4 camper behind me there. So let's go through some of the things that, uh, that have been done to this U. So inside we have um, an array of different radios. Being a ham radio operator, I have UHF, VHF, NHF radios in here in several different formats. For those of you uh, who know a little bit about that, I've got an ICOM IC7000, it's the main uh, multi-band radio and, uh, and a couple of other Chinese type radios and a UHF. I've got um, boost and EGT gauges for the turbo as well as an aftermarket cruise control and a remote head digital temperature gauge with an alarm. Um, the TD42 is a great engine, uh, well arguably. Uh, it does have a reputation of being known as a bit of a kettle and getting a bit warm. This one is running really well at the moment. It's got um, a brand new radiator clutch fan um, and viscous hub and it's making it run uh, nice and cool. Got a, a, a voltmeter in there, um, an Alpine Bluetooth stereo, um, external speakers for the radios, we've got a Waco cooler and we've also got a set of STS Series 4 GU seats which allow dual height adjustability and lumbar support which is uh, very nice. We've also got twin cameras up on the rear view mirror there looking at the back one for hitching up trailers like boats and uh, the other one just for a nice clear view at the back. We've got a whole bunch of switches that do random things turning accessories on and off, um, silencing alarms, turning the rear lights on and, and those sorts of things. Um, but uh, all in all, there's uh, not a lot of room in here. We do have an inverter in here as well with a power board just for charging cameras and laptops and things while you're on the go. Uh, we do have an inverter back in the camper as well if we want to use that when we're set up. This toolbox is permanently mounted to the ute at all times. Uh, it's got lights and USB chargers, voltmeters, um, leveling ramps, a 60 litre Waco and um, fans that uh, suck and blow depending on the temperature. There's temperature switches on there so if the fridge is getting hot it, uh, it sorts it out. We've also got a nice step in here for helping reach into the fridge. It was a bit difficult, we couldn't quite get a drop slide in here because it was too narrow. We were a bit pushed for space. But this um, is on here because we're running a DC4 travel lander which is a dual cab version and that was done on purpose. I wanted to still have a fridge and a cooker and everything else when we separate the camper from the ute so if you're doing day trips you still have uh, the ability to have a, a, a cold drink and cook up a bit of feed. Um, it's also handy having somewhere to lock your gear away even if the camper's not on board. Anyone who's had a single cab ute before knows that um, space inside is not exactly uh, a plenty so this was a good solution for us. So on the other side we have a couple of things that stay in here all the time. Uh, one of these is a first aid kit and we also have a cooker in here as well but this allows us to uh, have a, a whole bunch of storage for um, things that change from trip to trip. If we need to take a generator or some extra cartons of beer or whatever it happens to be, some firewood, we can put that inside this tray, inside this toolbox. And um, this is also good for just storing stuff day to day when you're using the ute as a daily driver or if you're uh, separated from the camper and you need to store things in there. We also have some work lights up here on both sides. This allows us to uh, flick them on when we're sitting up at night and um, just gives us a little bit of a, a breathing space around the camper so we don't uh, set up on ants' nests or uh, hit any tree limbs as we're opening up the travel lander. For those of you that haven't seen a travel lander configuration before, it's, uh, this one's pretty straightforward. I have made a couple of changes to it, but it's just got the fold-out kitchen as normal. Um, this is a, a really nice setup from Travel Lander where you get your sink and uh, cooker and everything comes out and it can fold out of the way if you're towing so that you can just lock it in there and jackknife the trailer and 
cook up a feed on the side of the road. It does have the Red Arc um, 30 amp battery management system in there, which is a full system. Uh, does 240 volts and DC DC. We've got a diesel heater, we've got uh, temperature gauges. I've actually changed the outlets here to uh, run off the inverter rather than off the mains because we find we're very rarely hooked up to mains um, and uh, that, that's just far more useful to us for charging laptops in the tent and um, running the coffee machine uh, and other bits and pieces. Also put a remote head on the um, on the projector inverter so that you don't have to open the tent up to turn that on and off. One of the other things that we had go wrong with this actually was um, the Evercool fridge had a, a mechanical thermistor on it and uh, that failed so I've replaced it with a digital um, thermometer or th uh, thermistor with a 12 volt headlight relay behind it um, which seems to work a lot more effectively. Up here is the mount for our shower tent which actually goes on the uh, second door of the camper and our 12 litre diesel tank for our Webasto heater. Um, that heats the water but it also has a space heater for inside the tent to keep us warm at night. This particular section here was very very difficult to plan out. There are two 240 volt inlets, uh, there are th well, four Anderson plugs and we've got mains water inputs. Um, it's very difficult to see in there. It's extremely tight between the toolbox and the camper and you can see there to the tank as well, the diesel tank as well. Down here we have a toolbox. It's got a fuse box in it, a water pump. Um, it's got our air hose because we run an endless air system um, under the bonnet and uh, it's a place for you know tire pressure gauges and stuff that gets dirty. We've also routed the sub tank uh, fuel inlet through that toolbox as well. You can see that the old girl's seen better days body wise but there's a uh, little rust at this point but uh, certainly could do with some paint. Um, up the top we have a solar panel that powers the Waco and just keeps everything topped up. And we've also got our work lights that we talked about earlier there as well. So up the front we've got a, uh, an old Tigers 2 12,000 pound Chinese winch. It's been on there for yonks and uh, still pulls pretty good. We've got some cheap LED lights on here. Got our uh, tapped, one of our tapped whips up there and a dual band antenna there, another one on the roof. Um, we've got dual batteries under here, just running off a starter solenoid. That's how it was when I bought it and it worked so good I've never changed it. I've also replaced the um, air intake system with a ZD30 airbox, which takes the same filter as a 4.2. Supposedly they have a larger outlet, um, but I think it would make very little difference. Um, we've put the Safari snorkel on, of course, um, but this turbo was bought secondhand from a Facebook buy and sell group, um, and a few borrowed parts off people and a bit of eBay shopping, and uh, it was all put on in the backyard by myself and a friend of mine. Um, it's not really too much magic going on under here. The only other thing I suppose of note would be, um, well the two things of note would be the endless air, air compressor that I've put on there. It's not a genuine endless air, it's just a, uh, a backyard jobby but it, it works, works brilliantly. And we've also got a, um, a five micron filter on the, uh, or pre-filter if you like, on the diesel system. We do get a fair bit of water in our fuel down here for some reason, so after the first uh, pump rebuild, I decided that uh, we'd try and avoid that in the future. Because it's quite heavy, um, leaf sprung patrols are pretty heavy to start with, but once you put uh, a travel lander on the back of it and a whole bunch of gear, steel bars, winches, extra batteries, um, it does start to add up. This particular setup here has four uh, NZZ70 size batteries in it, two in the car and two in the camper. Um, it takes 180 litres of water in the camper and 15 litres under the tray just for when the camper's not there. Uh, it takes 180 litres of diesel. So there's a fair bit of weight going on there. Um, I've taken it down and had it put through a GVM upgrade. It's running a Dobinson uh, 3.8 tonne GVM upgrade 
that was done locally in my uh, town and um, we're, we're pretty much bang on that when we take it over the Weybridge, give or take a couple of cartons of beer or a water tank or two. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.